at the time, I thought that my job was to show that cochlear implants did not work. I also have another confession to make that I actually started some multi-channel vibrotactile aids as a research proposal. And after I was in the clinic with one of our first cochlear implant patients and they actually heard one of the words correct, I decided that I would abandon the vibrotactile research. <laughs> so as, um, as Graham and Ingeborg and Blake have mentioned several times this evening, um, many, many people were instrumental in moving this field forward and making it such a success that it is today. Um, and so I'm going to talk about some people that were important for me in this field over the years. And I just want to say that I'm not going to mention very many people. And probably everybody in this room and hundreds of people that are not in this room had very important contributions. So the first thing I want to say is that there are some people that have passed away that made incredible contributions. And the first one I'll say is Bill House. And yeah. um, I know that uh, Bill House made many contributions in the field of ophthalmology. And I was thrilled in, uh, later on in, in uh, his life that he actually called me on the telephone in my office two or three times because he wanted to ask me questions about two articles that I'd written showing that some patients with single channel cochlear implants could understand open set word understanding. And of course, these patients had residual hearing, which was not normally done at the time. But um, Bill did a wonderful job in pushing us all forward because he believed in this. It turns out that he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but the way that he pushed us forward was important for the entire field. So Bill made an important contribution. The other person I want to mention is Blair Simmons. Blair Simmons, I met the first time at a meeting, a cochlear implant meeting, my very first one, uh, I believe in San Francisco. And I had told uh, Blair that I thought that at least the, the house group was doing some uh, speech perception tests on their patients. And Blair said to me that if I thought that the house group was doing good research on their cochlear implant patients, that I had no right being at the University of Iowa. <laughs> so what Blair brought to the field was he was one of the first ones that said, we need good research here. And Blair Simmons got involved and did good research and made the whole field pay attention to not just the marketing aspects and the, the patient testimonies, which were quite valid, but Blair said we need to do research in the area, and he led the way in making that happen. The third person that's no longer with us is Michael Hirshhorn. Michael Hirshhorn was the um, uh, CEO in the United States for Cochlear Corporation, and as has been said, it was very uh, difficult at the time to move the cochlear implant field forward because there was lots of skepticism. And Michael Hirshhorn was there at the right time, at the right place, and he was the right person. He had training both in medicine and in business. He was a very laid-back individual. He was very sincere and very honest. And he went to many clinics throughout the United States and convinced many clinicians to get involved in cochlear implants once again and led the way in making this happen. So I think that it's amazing that, um, that Bill House, Blair Simmons, and Michael Hirshhorn made incredible contributions in the very early stages to make this happen. So the second set of three people I want to acknowledge are supporters of our three awardees tonight. And as I've already said, in each of these contexts, that it's not just one person, and I think that uh, everybody knows that. It's not three people. It's a whole group. And it's amazing how uh, people have contributed, and I, I don't pretend to know the whole stories, and I don't pretend to know all the people involved. I'm get, just giving you my uh, perspective of different aspects. So. For Graham, I think one of the most impressive people that supported him all the way and got things moving was Jim Patrick, who is here tonight. So, 
Jim, Jim, of course, was the engineer behind everything and had the technical skills to make it work and put it all together and the foresight to set up the, all the proper signal processing strategies and make the right uh, engineering aspects and the electrodes and work together and build a wonderful team to actually make this happen. And Jim was there from the very beginning um, working beside Bram to make this a wonderful um, device that actually worked and functioned in people. The second person was supportive of Blake, and his name, he's not here, Mike Dorman. And uh, Blake had many skills, but what Blake needed was somebody who had a real background in speech perception testing and, and research aspects, and Mike Dorman stepped up uh, with an invitation from Blake to actually perform all kinds of experimental studies, to do the right experiments to actually show the world that, in fact, these multi-channel cochlear implants work. And it was documented in very carefully controlled experiments. And Mike Dorman had an enormous contribution, again, in bringing science to the field and supporting Blake in his work. So thank you again to Mike Dorman. So thirdly, I think uh, Ingeborg's main assistant was Erwin. <laughs> and of, course, of course, Irwin was the engineer, very um, focused, very focused on the engineering aspects, the science aspects, on the research aspects, and um, didn't have the big picture of how this could help the world. But he was incredibly skilled. He had, had a, a university position, many students working behind him. And he was there in the right place at the right time. And he had the skills, and he moved forward and made the signal processing happen for the METL, what eventually became the METL, which we, as we originally called the Vienna device, or the 3M Vienna device, <laughs> in the early, early days. And Irwin actually was there making it happen in the background, not necessarily in the background, but he was there making it happen with Ingeborg all the way. Very dedicated and very focused in the engineering aspects. Mm -hmm. So finally, now we have the three awardees today. What an amazing group, and what an amazing um, uh, complimentary group that we have. So here's Graham, and he's, for the most part, a clinician. He's a very kind, dedicated person who wants to help his patients. So he's also very smart and has a background in hearing research. And as those of you that know him well, he's a very friendly, easygoing, but motivated person. And so Graham steps up from his perspective because he cares about patients. Secondly, we have Ingeborg. So as well as being very smart, and as well as being a very clever engineer, she's incredibly well organized. She has a business model in mind. She has the background to put it all together to make the company work. So with the background of electronics, of business, and the organizational skill Ingeborg have had with, with her team, she made it happen in Vienna and has moved things forward enormously in Europe um, to create a cochlear implant to help patients worldwide. And thirdly, now we have Blake. Blake obviously has incredible technical skills, a very clever engineer, um, very knowledgeable person in many different ways. I was always amazed that Blake understood so much about the auditory system. How could this be? He wasn't an audiologist, he wasn't a psychoactive system. But he solved some of the very basic questions that needed to be solved in order to produce the cochlear implant that really worked. And of course, Blake did this in the context of an open system that was available to be used by everybody. Blake didn't form his own company. He's not a, uh, a multi-millionaire like some of the people we've seen today. He did it because he cared. It was the right thing to do. He had the knowledge behind him, and he made the um, continuous interleaved sampling available to 
everybody worldwide, and it just made an incredible difference worldwide. So thank you also, Blake. Yeah. So, well, I'll conclude by saying, again, I was so impressed by the three people that were selected. They had very different skills, come from very different backgrounds, and incredible um, uh, complemented each other in the overall perspective from different backgrounds, different angles, and it's what a wonderful selection of the awardees to have these three people part of the, um, the awards today. What a, a great thing for all of us. And so I'd like to conclude by offering congratulations, not just to Graham Ingeborg and to Blake, but to all of us here tonight, because I'm sure all of us had an impact, and for hundreds and maybe thousands of clinicians and researchers all around the world who made this happen, and to change the world of deafness by providing the very first artificial device for a sensory system in the world. Congratulations to everybody.